What's up guys? Today we have a very, very exciting PC build. A friend of mine got in touch recently and asked me to help him build a new PC. When building a new PC, the first thing you have to decide is what you want it to be capable of. What games are you going to be playing and what kind of software are you going to be running? Now he is going to use this PC for work, but it's mostly emails, documents, meetings, stuff like that, nothing too crazy. But in terms of gaming, he specifically wants to be able to play Apex Legends and Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing in 1440p. Once you've identified your goals performance wise, you move on to build aesthetics since it is a major part of building a PC. He's not a big fan of having a lot of crazy RGB lighting, and he would like the build to be as clean as possible. Last but not least, you'll need to consider your budget, which for this build was just over $2,000. So, at the core of this build, the beating heart, we have... The Gigabyte Aorus GeForce RTX 3080 Master. It is a monster. So we've got the new standard in cooling, massive heatsink, three fans, alternating directions. There is a little bit of RGB, but uh, we can just turn that off or set it to one color. Metal backplate. Oh, it does have an LCD screen uh, right there. It's got some presets. You can put a custom uh, animation on there if you want. You can set it to the temperature. Look how thick that is. Look at that sandwich. I'm pretty sure this is one of, if not the biggest 3080. Now for some brains to go with the brawn, we have the Ryzen 5 5600X CPU from AMD. It's got a base clock speed of 3.7 gigahertz with boost up to 4.6 when needed. It's got six cores and extremely high single thread performance. So it's one of the best CPUs for gaming, but it is actually quite capable in terms of photo and video editing and music production. It does come with a stock cooler, the Wraith Stealth, which is perfectly sufficient, but doesn't perform quite as well as the Wraith Prism, which comes with some of the other CPUs like the 3700X. For the motherboard, we have the B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi from MSI. We chose a motherboard with Wi-Fi for some versatility, but I would still recommend using Ethernet if you're serious about multiplayer gaming. This motherboard is pretty sleek, and along with the GPU, it's one of the only parts that has RGB, but again, we can just turn that off or set it to a single color. For memory, we have 16 gigabytes of Crucial Ballistics DDR4 RAM at 3600 megahertz. You don't really need more than that for gaming or basic photo and video editing, and you could always add more later. And for primary storage, we have a one terabyte NVMe SSD. These things are blazing fast. Um, we've gone with the Western Digital SN850. We haven't chosen a secondary storage device, but just like with the RAM, you could always add more later. To power all of this, we've gone with 750 watts, which is recommended for a build using one of the new RTX 30 series GPUs. So we've gone with the EVGA Supernova 750G+. It's got a fluid dynamic bearing fan that's designed to be super quiet. It's got an 80 plus gold rating, which means we've got good efficiency. Having a good power supply is often overlooked, especially in a pre-built PC where they don't even tell you the brand or the model of the power supply they're using. Quality is important and I would never skimp on the power supply, especially since you're spending so much money on the rest of the PC anyway. As I said, our CPU does come with a pretty good stock cooler, but we're gonna upgrade to the Noctua Chromax Black Dual Tower with 140 millimeter fans. Just like the GPU, this thing is a monster. That's the stock cooler, that's the Noctua. This is kind of overkill, but it is one of the best performing CPU coolers, and it's one of the quietest as well. To keep our cable management looking sleek and tidy, we've got some braided sleeve extensions from Asia Horse. And finally, the case with which to house this gaming rig. The Fractal Design Meshify C in black with dark tint tempered glass. It's designed to be super high airflow, and that's perfect for our gigantic GPU and CPU cooler. It's all black, it's perfect for your inner Darth Vader, Batman, Batwoman, Batperson. Thank you. 
I also added two NZXT case fans for a total of four case fans to utilize the vents in the front, top, and back. To deal with GPU sag, you can take one of the PCI slot covers and bend it to make your own GPU bracket. But we ended up getting this bracket. The clamp doesn't open wide enough to be able to hold the GPU, so I just took off the top and we really only need the bottom part to support the GPU anyway. Safe and secure. Okay, so we've installed Windows, updated the drivers, downloaded some games. We did run into two issues on the way, which is perfectly normal and no cause for panic. Number one, we did have to update the BIOS on the motherboard in order for it to recognize the CPU. It was very easy to flash the BIOS, so that's taken care of. The second issue was that two of the RAM slots weren't working. We figured that out by testing it with one stick of RAM at a time and even using completely different RAM. So we ended up getting a replacement for the motherboard. We had to move everything over. It's all working now and we're ready to go. First, we're going to try Valorant. This computer should have a very easy time with this game. It was designed to run on even budget computers. It's very well optimized. As expected, in 1440p, even on highest settings, we easily got over 300 frames per second. Alright, so next we're going to try Apex Legends. This is one of the games that John wants to play, so let's see what it can do. The frame rate seems to be hard limited at 300, and our frame rate usually hovered around 220 to 230 frames per second on 1440p high, which is more than sufficient for John's 165Hz monitor. Next let's try Call of Duty. This is a tough one. A lot of people have complained about how difficult it is to run Call of Duty, even on high-end PC builds. We were only able to get around 170 frames per second average in 1440p on low with ray tracing off, and around 130 frames per second average in 1440p high with ray tracing on. Now that's in Warzone, which involves a huge map and a lot of players and objects to process. In multiplayer with smaller maps and fewer players, we easily got way over 200 frames per second in 1440p high with ray tracing on. So it's really up to you what settings you want to play on. I would say just play it on high settings if you want it to be pretty, but if you really care, then yeah, go with uh, low settings so you can get that 165 for the monitor. Okay, so last we have Cyberpunk, the game that this computer was built to play. So the series of tests I've designed for Cyberpunk, which is by no means comprehensive or complete, it's just a few situations that I've thought of, which is walking around in the daytime, walking around at night, driving in the daytime, driving at night, and then also one of the missions where there's a lot of gunfights. Now you would think daytime scenes are easier on the system, but dealing with sunlight as well as lighting effects and shade actually make the scenery quite complex. Very taxing on the GPU, but this is part of what makes the game feel so immersive. The Kabuki Night Market is one of the areas that is very taxing on the system because of all the pretty lights and the population of NPCs, so I used it as a baseline for finding the right balance of settings. You've got the beautiful reflections, the glare and lens flares, multiple light sources, haze, fog, shadows, distortion, and when you have depth, all of the layers of lighting effects are really going to crush most GPUs. The 3080 is just barely able to give us 50 to 60 frames per second average, thanks to DL LSS and some fine-tuning of the settings. Driving in the daytime is pretty smooth even in the city, but again when you deal with mixed lighting like in this tunnel where you have both daylight and nighttime effects, the frame rate will dip to the 40s. When you're driving in shade or in full daylight, the GPU has a much easier time and we get over 70 frames per second. For some, driving at night is what cyberpunk is all about being immersed in that dystopian Hong Kong, Tokyo nightlife. You could spend hours just riding around on a motorcycle, enjoying the lights, the backdrop, the wind in your hair. Fortunately, the game runs pretty well most of the time during night driving, and of course when you venture outside of the city, things only get smoother. 
I used the heist mission at the Arasaka Tower to test the frame rate during a lot of action. There's bad guys, there's smoke effects, there's lots of particles flying around, glass shattering, shiny floors, blood spatters, a lot of cool special effects. There's a lot going on and combat is where having consistently high frame rate really matters. I've optimized the settings for this computer. Um, I just turned everything on high, and then I turned down everything that uses resources but doesn't make a noticeable difference in-game, and there's a lot of those. I've kept everything high that is noticeable. For example, the local shadow mesh quality is not noticeable when I turned it to low, so I left it there. But local shadow quality, it actually is noticeable even if you just turn it down one notch, so I left it on high. I didn't really see much of a difference with cascaded shadows, and most people just turn that on low. Screen space reflections quality I've turned to low because that's basically fake ray tracing, and we have ray tracing on ultra, so I just left it on low just in case there's a few things where the game relies on the fake reflections and not ray tracing, but I'm not sure if there are any. I didn't really notice too much of a difference putting ray tracing on psycho, so I've put it on ultra. So with these settings, we're averaging around 70 frames per second, sometimes up to 80 for most of the game. The only places it really dips are stuff like the night market, where it dips down to like 50s and 60s, and then that weird tunnel where it goes down to 40 frames per second. So we're just gonna set the maximum FPS to 60 so that we don't tax the system too much, and uh, we should get pretty smooth, consistent gameplay for most of it. We have the highest settings that we can use with the 3080 to give us the most beautiful visuals and the smoothest gameplay. Alright, so this computer absolutely crushes Valorant and Apex Legends. It gives us pretty respectable numbers for Call of Duty, which is impressive. And we are able to play Cyberpunk at a pretty consistent 60 frames per second in 1440p with ray tracing. I had a lot of fun building this computer and tweaking it, testing it. Let me know if you have any questions. If you're planning a PC build and there's certain games you want to play or certain programs you want to use, please like, subscribe, share this with your friends, connect with me on the socials, stay safe, and and I'll see you next time. All right, I just picked up John and we're gonna go pick up his GPU. This weighs as much as a MacBook Pro.